Welcome to Market Monday from the investment team and the trust department at the First National Bank. We're going to begin today by reviewing the past couple of weeks of economic data because some of it was consequential and, and changed views of what to expect for the future in a meaningful way. Uh, we'll go follow that up by looking at what's to come over the next couple of weeks because there are some key data points that may move markets. We'll look at their impact and projected impact on equities and in the fixed income space and round things out with a discussion of inflation and the difference between producer and consumer inflation. So starting things off, a couple of weeks ago, we got data on the Consumer Price Index, CPI, which on the month-over-month -month basis and the year-over-year -year basis came in lighter than expected. Month-over-month, -month it grew by 0.4% and a year-over-year -year by 77 and that's worth mentioning that you know the expectations were for a 0.6% growth or a 7.9% growth, respectively. So that suggests that potentially the Fed is effective and, and the effects are beginning to be felt of the rate hiking cycle. Um, following that up with information on the producer price index, the same situation held. 0.2% versus a 0.4% month over month price growth in producer prices. The year over year came in at 8% versus an 8.3% expected uh, rate. And so we cannot say, like many of the analysts out there are, uh, are talking about, that potentially we've seen peak inflation, you know, using quotes around that, um, the evidence is not clear enough to make that call yet. But it could be the initial start of seeing inflation slow down its pace of growth, and that would be in response to the rate hiking cycle, and potentially the slowing economy, because we've been getting signals of that as well. Sentiment came in notably weaker, and we're seeing other signs of weakening in the economy, the business outlook at the Philly Fed, you know, the labor market softening a bit, news of layoffs, things of that nature. Um, but there are other signs that say the economy is strong, uh, the housing market coming in better than expected. Ultimately, though, over the past couple of weeks, we got a very important indicator, the leading economic indicators index, which is an assortment of of different inputs that when taken together has predictive power over what's happening with gross domestic product on a forward-looking basis. And this came in at negative 0.8% versus expectations of negative 0.4%. That suggests a slowdown could be imminent in economic growth. In other words, we could potentially be looking at that recession in 2023 that analysts have been talking about so frequently. Going forward, we have information on uh, the health of the demand side of the economy, durable goods orders, and that's important because consumers are only opening up the wallet and making big ticket purchases when they're confident in the future. That's expected to show growth, but not robust growth. You know, we'll get more information about the labor market and outlooks with these PMIs, Purchasing Managers Index, Sentiment Index, the Fed Manufacturing Index uh, at the Dallas Fed, and confidence board consumer confidence that is important because the consumer makes up two-thirds to three-quarters of our economic growth and with that being the case we want to know what the consumer is thinking is are are the thoughts getting better about the future or are we starting to sour in our outlook and that will be reflected here it is expected to show a decline from 102.5 to 100 we'll be watching to see whether it comes in above or below expectations because above expectations could have inflationary implications below expectations could have recessionary implications we'll get information on gdp where this is the second reading of third quarter gdp and it is expected to be revised up by 0.2 percent to 2.8 percent from 2.6 that is somewhat of a one-off expectations in light of all of the other indicators pointing toward recessionary pressures in the economy but it is worth noting that there was a pretty robust third quarter growth and rounding things out as we get into the following week more information about the consumer more information about what's going on at the production level more information about the labor market and ultimately that will round us out what are the implications for markets well in the face of contradictory economic information where some of it is good some of it is bad from the perspective of is there going to be a recession or at least that question 
we've seen remarkable strength and resiliency in the markets. And that is a good sign because markets tend to bottom long in advance of the declaration of a recession. And we've seen behavior that indicates we're in a bottoming process. When you look back to June and it tried to get down lower than 3,600 and couldn't, when it hugged that level and peaked below it back last month, and then is now back up and kind of treading water and trending up, we think that the equity market could be looking out past all of these mixed messages in the economy and the inflation considerations to a recovery down the line. In terms of interest rates, the yield curve is telling us a pretty clear picture. And that is on the short end, it's rising. This represents this gold, the last month yield curve. This represents as of today, this green on the bottom represents at the beginning of the year. And when we look at what's happened over the past month, you know, in response to Federal Reserve rate hikes, the short term end of the curve has gone up. That has driven down yields at this longer middle range between two and 10 years. And when we see an inverted yield curve like that, in other words, the two year rate is higher than the 10 year rate, that is another inf uh, recessionary indicator. And it suggests that the Federal Reserve is going to get inflation under control, but it's going to do so by causing a recession in the economy, whether that be mild or protracted and, and, and deep. We don't know the answer to that question. It does appear that it would be a shallow and shorter type of a recession if we get it at this point. Um, and then when we see out on the longer end of the curve, the, the decline over the past month clearly reflects declining inflation expectations because inflation is the prime mover of longer term rates. And let's talk about inflation. The producer price index came in last at 11.2% at its annual you know, growth rate. And the consumer price index came in at 7.7. Both of these are meaningfully lower than what they were at their peaks, with consumer prices growing by almost 10% and producer prices growing by pretty close to 18%. But there's still a mismatch here, and this is a challenge for you know equities because they report earnings, and earnings is sales, your revenue, minus your costs. PPI represents input costs. CPI represents the cost that you're able to pass on to your consumer. So for companies, this configuration where producer prices are rising higher and faster than consumer prices indicates that margins have to be shrinking and companies are likely to report lower earnings as a result of that. So we will be watching. Um, that could be the cause and driver of further volatility. But we want to zoom back out on the market as well, because while the past year that we've looked at already looks a bit unnerving and volatile, on the longer term time frame, which is what all investors are looking at, or I shouldn't say all, but most investors are looking at and what we're looking at as long term investors, the overall picture is a lot brighter. And that's what we want to focus on. So this is to highlight the fact that we don't want to make changes to our long-term, well-thought-out investment plan that's designed to perform over 5, 10, and more years based on short-term events and things that are headlines in the news. And if you have questions, if you have concerns, we're happy to chat with you about them, we're happy to give you our views, and we're happy to provide some comfort where and when we can. Um, hopefully you found this useful. Please reach out to us if you have questions. Thank you and have a great day.